this point, a complete mastoidectomy has been performed, including skeletonizing the sigmoid sinus and thinning the dural plate over the posterior fossa. It is not necessary to open the facial recess to get to the endolymphatic sac, though we have done that here for chapter four. After the mastoidectomy, identify the position of the mastoid segment of the facial nerve and open the retrofacial air cells. The retrofacial air cells lie medial to the mastoid facial nerve and provide a path to both the endolymphatic sac and the posterior wall of the jugular bulb. The digastric ridge helps identify the position of the facial nerve. Moving superiorly near the lateral and posterior semicircular canals, the posterior canal is skeletonized by removing the superior most retrofacial cells. Note the difference in color between the cancellous bone of the retrofacial air cells compared to the labyrinthine bone over the semicircular canals. When deciding where to remove the cortical bone overlying the posterior fossa dura, the surgeon estimates the location of the endolymphatic sac. Donaldson's line is a posterior extension of the plane of the lateral semicircular canal demonstrated by the sickle. The endolymphatic sac is always found between Donaldson's line and the jugular bulb. Note the position of the sigmoid sinus and the cortical bone overlying the posterior fossa dura. Remind yourself of the location of the labyrinth and the facial nerve so as not to injure them. As the cortical bone is thinned over the dural plate, the drill sound will become very high pitched. When the bony covering becomes eggshell thin, use an elevator to pick it away, revealing the endolymphatic sac. The endolymphatic sac is a fan-shaped structure that attaches distally to the sigmoid sinus. It is anchored under the posterior semicircular canal by the endolymphatic duct. The surface is vascular and red appearing. If the endolymphatic sac cannot be identified, the surgeon likely needs to dissect deeper into the retrofacial air tract. To place an endolymphatic shunt, such as for refractory Meniere's disease, the endolymphatic sac is widely decompressed and opened as shown here. Then, stent the sac open with non-absorbable material. 